Hello, everyone. I'm Scott Gordon, VP of Talent Solutions here at Baco, headquartered out of Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, today, I want to introduce Alyssa Belmondo, who is an associate technology recruiter with Baco. Alyssa, say hello to everybody. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, what we call hot job summer. And Alyssa is uh, one of our veteran recruiters here on the technology division in uh, with, with Vaco here in Nashville. So I've got some questions for her about what she's seeing in this market that could be uh, not only to this market here in the central part of the United States, but also west and maybe east. So um, what I would invite everyone to do is there, there's plenty of room in the chat to ask questions. So please ask away and, and we'll try to answer some of those. So Alyssa, just to get started, um, tell me what it's like right now as a recruiter in, in, in just Nashville. What is it, what does it feel like to you? And I know you've been doing this for a long time. So how can you compare this year to previous years? Well, if I had to use one phrase, I would say it's wild. Um, the job market is crazy right now. I think that there's more opportunities than there has ever been before. Um, and with that, there's more candidates um, than there than I've ever seen before. Um, so I think that the market here locally is not only it's not only focused here, but we're also looking at nationwide too. So it's it's wild. Do you have, um, and I know we're not all experts and don't work for the Wall Street Journal, et cetera, et cetera, and not, a not have done a lot of bunch of, or a bunch of research, but <laughs> what do you think is driving that? Um, I mean, COVID started it, remote work. Um, companies that had never considered doing remote work before were kind of forced to do that. And so with remote work comes the opportunity for a, a candidate to apply to positions that they never could before. Um, so the job opportunities have opened up tremendously. Um, yeah. And then on the flip side, the candidates who could only look and, you know, apply for positions in their in their area, um, they're now competing with candidates all, all across the country. So it goes, it's both sides and it has to do with remote work. Right. What is, what do you think, what's the mixture of on-site, meaning on-site people that are going into the office, mm -hmm. uh, or people staying in the same city, versus a, a company willing to hire someone that lives in Alberta, Canada, or or South America or whatever like that. Do you see, are you seeing a mix of those types of positions? Um, not really, most of them are remote. Um, we do have some, at least from my experience and what I can see locally um, from just Nashville, we do have some clients that we support that have, you know, adjusted to the remote work and then it's, you know, gone back to that focusing on that culture and in-person environment. So at least in Nashville, there's a little bit of the on-site still, um, but yeah. I would say overwhelmingly across the country, it's predominantly remote. Yeah. So from a candidate, if I'm a candidate or the candidates that you're talking to, and I assume you're talking to candidates all over the country. Mm -hmm. Yep. What's more important to them? Is it um, as far as within technology, what's driving their decision? Uh, mm -hmm to change jobs now? Are they changing because of the option to work remote? Are they changing because of money? Are they changing because of skill set? Yeah, so you touched on the two. I would say two that are probably tied at the top. It's first remote work, 100%. Yeah. I mean, now the candidates and a lot of people in the IT, their IT fields, they can do their jobs from home. So now that there's just an overwhelming amount of remote opportunities, they may not have been in the market previously, but now that there's a lot of remote work available, they're starting to look again. So predominantly remote. And then the second one is salary. Um, we have seen, and this is the part that I, I referred to as wild. We have seen candidates and I've talked to candidates that are here locally and they're getting contacted for positions and with companies that are in different markets and different areas. And they're getting offers at 10, 20, 30, sometimes 50 K more than they normally would see. Wow. So the positions that have opened up in these other branches or excuse me, other markets have allowed for that salary to the salary expectations to change. So remote work, salary, two biggest drivers for sure. How, if I'm a candidate, how can I compete with that? How can I, I mean, if I, if I'm, yeah. say I've got skills, say I've got, I've got all the skills, and I were open to remote work. And this, there's a two part question. I'll ask you this one first. 
if I am ready to look for a position and I'm open to remote, mm -hmm. how long should I expect to be on the market? And I'm talking, I'm, I'm an A plus, I'm an A plus. I mean, I've got everything. My money's pretty much in line. If I post my resume on Career Builder Monster LinkedIn, indeed, how long should I expect to be available? And how, and, and how many calls, how many calls should I expect? How much, how much of a time suck is, is working with you or a company like Baco? How, how much, what's the benefit and how much, how long is it going to take? Yeah. I mean, if you're a candidate and you have so, a solid technical background and we're talking like a top notch candidate, you put your resume out there you start promoting yourself as available or open to work, you're going to get calls immediately that same day. I mean, I would expect 10 plus calls a day. You're going to be getting messages that you can't even respond to within a week. Um, and if you really wanted to actively interview and put yourself out there and really search for a job, you could probably get some interviews and even an offer within a week to two weeks, um, just because the opportunities are, uh, are so great right now. So I will, I will say this, that there are usually when it's this, when it's this busy and I'm a candidate, mm -hmm. then I can kind of go for the jugular, so to speak, <laughs> when, it comes, when it comes to rate. I mean, everybody yeah. wants me, so everybody's going to pay for me. How, yeah. how in line or how, how, where, where, where do you draw a line in the sand to say, look, we just can't do that. Or our client's not going to do that. And our, what's, what's your role in, and I would say our role in VACO and educating the client as well as a consultant or a potential consultant or candidate about the rate mm -hmm. changes and how are you competing with that? So say um, sitting in Nashville and mm -hmm. somebody wants to, or, or, or we've got, you know, they can sit in California and they want California yep. based rates, but the client is in Memphis, for example, how do you, mm -hmm. what do you handle that? So I would say, I think it's going to level out here eventually. I don't know the timeline on it, but I have seen it firsthand. I've talked to candidates. I have recruiters on my team that are, you know, working with candidates that are legitimately getting these offers and taking them. So at a certain point, it is difficult to compete with those, those other companies and those salary ranges. But one thing that when I do talk to candidates locally, whether it's in Nashville or if you're working with a recruiter who's local to, to where you are, I highly advise candidates to consider the companies that they're interviewing for because right, right now and, and you know it's easier said than done but when a, a large amount of money gets thrown at you that you never considered you know making before or even asking for it is hard to turn that down so i just encourage candidates when you're getting approached with those positions when you're going through the interview processes really understanding you know what that company is about beyond the money and keeping your goals in mind and making sure that you're vetting them out just as you would a company that's local to you. Right. And I, I'm going to, and I want to chime in about that as well. as far as how do you separate yourself? And I want you to talk about mm -hmm. how a candidate separates themselves um, from everyone else when looking for a search, I think as recruiters yeah. and, you know, one of the terms that we use all the time is post and pray. And that's where, you know, we post the open job and just pray that the right candidate applies. And sometimes <laughs> we see that, Sometimes we see that on the, on, you know, on the candidate side as well, my, you know, developers, software developers and things that we've hired in the past that will apply for everything. They've yeah. not, you know, they've not researched the job. They don't say anything relative about the job or the company that they're interested in. And sure. a lot of the times there's not even an email or a, I'm not saying a formal cover letter. I don't even right. know if people send those anymore, but they're not saying like, um, you know, dear, you know, even calling you by your name, Alyssa, I'm really interested in this position. Right. It's just an email with a resume. So what tips can you offer a candidate yeah. or potential candidate that will, that will help them uh, stand yeah. out in this search? Because first of all, let me ask you this too. How many open positions are you working on now in Nashville? And in, in, just in, in your division, just rough estimate. Um, if I were to focus on a skill set, so let's just say .NET, 15 probably active ones that are for, from clients that are here locally based out of here. And how many, how many emails, I guess, emails and phone calls and applications, rough estimate, are you fielding in one day? To all those postings, probably 50 to each applicants a day. 50 applicants per. Yes. And that doesn't mean necessarily qualified and they could be from sure. other locations, but yes, applying. 
which tells so, you how many candidates there are that are out yeah. there in general. And we all, each recruiter has their own style and approach and how they, how they, um, how they choose which one to call first, I guess, prioritization um, yeah. and everybody prioritizes differently. But what, what do you see from a candidate that will make you want to pick up the phone and call them immediately? How do they stick out to you? And I'm not saying how do they stick out to all recruiters, but you specifically. Right, just me. So, and I actually, I don't know if anyone here follows Taylor Dessian's uh, guidance counselor 2.0, but he just posted something about this with a resume and just the fundamentals of it. Um, and I actually think the resume debate, I mean, it could go on for hours and resumes are very subjective. You could feel like you write the most perfect resume for one hiring manager and another one looks at it and, and doesn't like it at all. So I do think that there's a different resume for everybody in the way that you write it. But I think fundamentally, the first thing, grammatical errors and format, it's visually how it visually comes across. It's the most simple thing. And no matter what your technical skills are, no matter what your background is, if you have grammatical errors or formatting or spacing, it's just difficult to read visually, you're going to get passed over. Um, right. So I think that's the first thing. As far as the content on the resume, again, everyone writes them differently. Everyone has a different viewpoint. But I do think that one of the best things, especially someone in IT, no matter what your field is that you can do, is be specific on your resume. So I read some resumes that are so vague or they talk about a, a company or a position that they had and I really truly can't tell what they did in that role, like what their accomplishments were, what, what they contributed to the position themselves. So those resumes are a little bit harder because it makes me feel like either they don't really know what they did there or you know they have something to kind of cover up as in, instead of actually portraying that accurately. So. Yeah be as specific as you can in a resume um make sure all the technologies are listed on there um be yeah just all the buzzwords everything on there that you want to see um and then i actually think what i like about a resume i think sometimes people think at the top like the summary or the overview sometimes they skip on that but a resume essentially when you write that and you're putting all your positions on there that's your past that's talking about what you've done and and your present as well but what a resume can't accurately portray is what you want in the future. So I think a summary or an objective or anything at the top that can talk about, you know, I can see what you've done. I can see where your skill set is. But before I call you, I don't know where you want to go. I don't know if you have an industry preference. I don't know where you're passionate, you know, what you're passionate about. So I think if, if you can take the time to write a really well-rounded summary on where you want to be and what your objective is before I even get on the phone with you, I yeah. already know what type of conversation I should have with you. So for me personally, I love a good summary. It just tells me a little bit more about a candidate than just the experience. Yeah, good. So I've got, um, I've been in the industry for 10 years, for example. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a software developer. Um, and I think that I need to show all of the information mm -hmm. of all the projects that I've done would you prefer to see all of my projects on the, on that resume or would you prefer, and I've got to, I, and I'll, I'll chime in about what I would prefer as a recruiter. Mm -hmm. um, or would you rather see more information about the job for which I'm applying as, as, and how, and how that relates? Yeah. Um, very straight answer. I would want to see both. So I would encourage you, especially if you have a lot of experience, like you do create two resumes, because like I said, every, position is going to look for something different. Every hiring manager is going to look for something different. And if you spend the time up front to create a resume that gives an overview on all your skills, and then you spend time, maybe you want to find a position that just looks for a very specific skill set. So you want to have a resume that just focuses on those technologies specifically, have those ready to go. It'll save you time in your job search when you're applying. Um, so you don't have to go back and edit it for every little position. So I guess to answer your question, I would do both. Um, and I think both can be very useful and depending on the position that you, you know, you want to interview for. Right. It's, it's funny. I mean, it's to, uh, for you to, you know, the things that you're looking for in a resume and the things that I look for. And I think all recruiters are different in that fact. All that, different. Um, yeah. yeah. And I just got off. Um, I just was talking to a bunch of, of newer recruiters that just joined Baco. And I said, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter to me if there's a misspelling on a resume, because I think that especially I, I can fix the misspelling later. Sure. Um, I, I do think that it's wise that everyone 
you know, put multiple eyeballs on your resume before you choose to send it. Sure. Um, but I've always said in technology, I don't hire uh, English lit majors. I hire software developers and, and people that work on <laughs> applications. Yes, that's true. All that. So, yeah. um, you know what I'm saying on that? Yeah. So, there's, um, yeah. Uh, so, I've got one question from the audience. So, how does someone stand out if they want to switch career paths? So, someone's um, in accounting and finance, but they really they want to get into gaming or something like that. How yeah. do you, how can you slash we um, guide them in that direction? Yeah. Well, I would say, you know, when you're blindly applying, or not blindly, but when you're submitting that's your a, record- That's a hard question. I mean, literally, that's a hard question. How do you do I'm, it? I, you, know? well, if, you mean if they haven't even connected with us yet, if they're just sending their resume in, or if we've already worked yeah, with them? Yeah, you know what, I'm, I work at, uh, I'm, a, I'm a personal trainer at, uh, at the YMCA, but I really want to be a software developer. Sure. What, what guidance can you offer? What can you do? Um, well, I think you do have to put the experience that you have. A resume is what you've done in the past. Um, the objective statements, the summaries, like really making sure, because if you have one one you know line of experience or career path and you apply to a position that's not relevant, I can't tell from that necessarily that that's what you want to do. I may think that you're just blindly on career builder, just you know applying away. So I think right. really focusing your resume to say if it's to get my attention or another recruiter at Vaco initially um, is to put that on there. Talk about what you do want to do. Um, and then especially if you're just trying to get into it, all experience, even if it's not professional. So anything you've done on the side, personal development, like Absolutely. that's going to help you stand out because if you don't have any experience to talk about in a professional setting, you have to talk about what you have done with it. So right. putting anything that's related to that on your, from a resume perspective is going to help you in that, that area. I, I agree. And I've, I've, uh, to that point, it doesn't have to be a paid position. No, not uh, at all be something where, and, and I've talked to, I mean, hundreds, if not thousands of people that have side that, you know, they have a side hustle. Absolutely. Uh, they're building something on their own. They're building some sort of something for home automation that a client may be interested in it. Like a, it's to your point, it doesn't have to be something that where the candidate has been paid, but not if at they've, all. Developed, they've developed something on their own that can really add. I will I tell you this. Oh, sorry. So I have a great success story from that. I And if anyone here is on here in the Nashville area, you know, we see a ton of people coming from NSS and trying to get their, their IT career started. And there was one person um, that we just worked with, one candidate, and he actually ended up getting the role over candidates that were at the same level of professional experience. So basically at nothing. Um, and he had done a side project unpaid um, for about a year. And that alone was the deal breaker because he was able to talk about what he has experience with, even if he didn't get paid for it. So, yeah. yeah. Your, your side hustle, I think your side hustle could be, I mean, I think people have side hustles because it's something that they really enjoy. And sure. I think there are a lot of people that have side hustles. I mean, and, and sometimes if you, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't neglect that on your resume. Not at all. Uh, but I wouldn't neglect that in an interview as well. Not at all. So, yeah. That's a great story, Alyssa. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so in Nashville, mm -hmm. and, and I know that you talk to candidates all over the country, and I know that you have heard about what's happening, say, in Seattle or Los Angeles or Dallas or New York or Miami. Mm -hmm. um, from, from your experience and your, your level uh, of years in the industry and how crazy it is right now, can you give me a handful of top skills that, that everybody is looking for? Well, I mean, just from my experience in Nashville, and I can only assume it's across the, the country, um, but the first skill set that stands out is cloud, anything cloud related. We're seeing a ton of opportunities yeah. from our clients here um, and bigger companies too. So they're not just, you know, they have an office in Nashville, but they're throughout the country. So they're clearly looking for that skill set, that skill set across the board. Um, and then, you know, I don't, I, I've been in the Nashville market for about a year and a half. So I'm slowly starting to learn, you know, the shifts in technologies and trends and seeing COVID come and now kind of on the other end of it. And so another skill set that stood out is I think Nashville's historically been a Microsoft town um, from what I've learned here. And we're seeing a major shift into JavaScript, Python, 
anything in data science. I mean, our, a lot of our clients are asking for that um, probably more, if not equally, to the same skill sets we've seen historically. Yeah. How important are degrees from our clients? Are you seeing or do you have any clients mm -hmm. that are requesting a, a particular degree or? Um, it's hard to answer that because, yeah, I guess, yes, I, I, a lot of positions that we support, they want the fundamental education. Um, I think it depends on the level of candidate. So, you know, someone that can utilize their years of experience in place of a degree sometimes helps. So I, I don't think it's a, a, you know, a yes or no from some clients, but there are a lot of companies that want to see that, you know, education and that uh, fundamental, the fundamentals behind their experience. So. Sure. What is the wildest, um, what is the wildest request that you have gotten from a candidate regarding money or location or somebody that's just um, super, like super ready to go, but has asked just some of the wildest, like for me to work there, I require blah, -de blah. What's the, what's some, something wild that you've heard from a candidate? Um. I'm going to ask you the I same know question. If it's some, I think it's honestly, the thing that stands out to me is salary. Like I've talked to some people where, you know, I, again, I'm, it's not always in those rates, but I have a general idea of what certain skill sets make and what level you're at and, you know, years of experience. And I talked to, for example, I talked to someone and they were out of the New York market. And for me, let's just say, for example, at their level with what they do in their years of experience, I'd probably put them in 70 to 80 K and this yeah. person was asking for 120 to 140K. So, and I, I think that is because that may be what they're seeing or hearing from their market up in New York. But when I heard that, I just, I don't, it, it was it was crazy, especially for the years of experience. So let, let me ask you this, and I'll get close to the camera. What did you say to them? <laughs> um, uh, there's no way that will ever happen or t tell me about that no What's i mean i did well when he first said it i did ask him you know how did you get to that salary like where where is yeah. why is that your target range because that's a, i mean it's a wide salary range but it's also pretty specific and so i just had him walk me through and and sometimes you know i get it there's candidates right now that are hearing and i'm even saying it right now you know the salary ranges that are being offered are are way higher than we ever thought. And so I think sure. that some candidates really are just aiming high because they think they'll aim high and fall low. So it's right. more just about understanding, like, how did you get to that? What are you hearing? And of course he was in New York. So that's what he's hearing. He's, he's hearing salaries that are, are very, very high. So I think it was more just asking questions. How did he get to that? Why is he looking for that? Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean, you know, he could be very realistic in what he's looking for in his skill set. It's just, something that he and I just weren't in the same market about. So. Sometimes, you, sometimes you don't know that you don't know. Yeah. I think it goes, I think that goes both on um, my side, you know, working here. Sometimes I don't know that I don't know and I have to research. <laughs> and find that stuff yeah, out. Me too. I mean, candidates don't know that they don't know. They've heard yeah. from their friend that they could double their money Absolutely. and the same thing on the client side. I mean, our clients and are, are focused on what it is that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're not focused on hiring. They're focusing on, I don't know, making dog food or yeah. you know, slurpy machines or whatever. And, <laughs> and, and, you know what I'm saying? I mean, okay, they're, they're focused on that and they don't focus on hiring. So sometimes when it's time for them to hire, you know, they it's, it, it's an education on both sides. So sure. let's switch gears to the client side. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the wildest requirement that you've seen during COVID, post COVID, I don't even I don't know if we can say post COVID now. I don't I don't even know. Um, but what's the what's the wildest requirement that you that a salesperson has brought to you? OK. And it's one of those. You just kind of go. Are you serious? This person's going to know what I'm talking about. <laughs> nope. um, so on our any, team any, in the middle in the middle of COVID. So summer, you know, there's no end in sight at this point. Um, we got a request for um, an on-site, oh, I think it was overnight, uh, to be on-site overnight shift, I think it was. So yep. as far as just the crazy requirements, it's more just location and what they're requiring, I guess, physically of <laughs> somebody to do, not necessarily the skill set. Yeah, okay. I think that we all get those those requirements. I think that happens once a day that a requirement comes in and we just kind of go, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. About? So we've got 
just a little bit of time. We've got one more question uh, from Janet. Mm -hmm. and she said, how do you negotiate salary when you're not from the city and you don't know that market? That's a really good question. Thank you, Janet. So yeah, thank you. Um, if I were if I were working with you as your recruiter here, um, the first thing I would do is I'm here in Nashville. I see the rates here. I see the market here. You know, I'm not as educated on the um, the you know the rates and the ranges from other cities. And so the first thing I would do is I'd connect you to a, another a senior recruiter out of that market, so you could have a really open, honest conversation about what's realistic there, um, because recruiters with throughout Vaco, I mean, we're seeing these positions come in all day long in our markets. And so we should ideally be able to give you rough ranges of what you you know should be asking for, where your experience is. So I think it's going to an expert like a recruiter that you can have a really honest conversation with about that market and come to a, you know, an understanding of how much you should actually be be asking for. So sure. connect you to Good. someone there. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I think uh, here in a few minutes, I want to offer your email address. Yes. Uh, for some, you know, some post follow up. If anybody has questions like that, or they have a resume that 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 they'd like to share, uh, we'll definitely we'll, we'll definitely offer that up. Um, we've got about uh, just just a few minutes left. I don't see any other questions coming in, so I, I can I can give everybody back uh, the two minutes or or two and a half minutes that are coming up. Alyssa, thank you for for coming on with me today. It was a pleasure. I got a lot out of it. I've, I've heard a bunch of. Um, um, I've heard a bunch of, of good things coming from you. I do also want to remind everybody that next week there's going to be another hot job summer series specifically to accounting and finance trends. It'll be next Wednesday at 1130 Central Standard Time right here. So you can find us on LinkedIn. Alyssa, would you tell all of our listeners, readers, users, watchers, your email address and contact information? Of course. Um, well, thank you everyone for tuning in. I appreciate your time as well. Um, and my email is A, so first letter of my first name. Belmondo is my last name. B as in boy. Yeah. E That's at the bottom of the screen. That's good. M O N D O at Vaco.com. Great. Thank you. My email address is Scott at Vaco, V as in Victor, A C O.com. So thank you everybody for tuning in. And, um, as always, if you've got questions, hit either one of us up and we'll be happy to get you some, some information. Thank you. Thank you.